Right now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, President Biden just wrapped up an emergency meeting with NATO leaders over the war in Ukraine. How the alliance is responding one month after Russia invaded. Also, big changes coming to the Aurora Police Department. Why sources say Chief Vanessa Wilson is planning to resign. And remembering Madeleine Albright, how Colorado is honoring the first female Secretary of State. And a look at her deep ties to Colorado. That's yeah. right. Uh, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo is here with a look at the warm up coming. Mm. It is going to be so pretty. Very mm -hmm. bright, though, this morning. We're now having to deal with that eastbound drive and that sun glare from Lyman from our Viero camera out east. You can see just how clear it is. The good news is the winds have really calmed down. It was so gusty yesterday. Today we're going to see speeds at about 15 to 30 miles per hour. A little breezy. Winds are shifting, though, out of the west and southwest, and so some warmer air is going to start to settle in. Low to mid 30s at the bus stop this morning for your kids will be in the low 60s by early afternoon, and then hitting highs right around 60 67 between four and five. It's going to be a warm day today, warm again tomorrow, and then actually almost toasty this coming weekend. I'll show you where we're likely going to hit some 80s on Sunday here in just a few minutes. And overall, the drive is just getting busier in those usual spots, and that sunshine that you mentioned is a major problem for those eastbound routes. So I-70 heading across I-25 here, getting through the lower section, that's a problem. This is the ramp coming from northbound I-25 to go east I-70. That's slowing 44th Avenue, and you can see some of the building traffic across downtown as well. Look Look at the camera there at I-76 near 96th Avenue. Typical slow and go traffic with a gorgeous sunrise, but that sunshine is going to be a major problem. You can already see on the drive times up on I-76 over 20 minutes there, 20 minutes on I-25 and already busy across 270, I-70 and the east side of town. So it's starting to see a lot more traffic on and off the freeways, but no major big issues for us, which is helping us out. We still have 287 closed down in Broomfield. I'll have those details for you coming up in just a minute. Well, we do have some breaking news this morning. The United States will welcome up to 100,000 refugees fleeing the war in Ukraine right now. President Biden is in Belgium for a NATO emergency meeting about the invasion. He spoke just moments ago and reiterated the need for sanctions against Russia and America's unwavering support for the people of Ukraine. Just before the president spoke, the Ukrainian president addressed the chamber through video conference, Volodymyr Zelensky stopped short of asking for a no-fly zone, as he has previously, but he also asked NATO to supply Ukraine with more tanks and fighter jets. President Biden will meet with leaders of the G7 nations in about 10 minutes. Today marks exactly one month since you, Russia invaded Ukraine, and we're getting new drone video showing the devastation in the coastal city of Mariupol. But Ukrainians are fighting back. The Pentagon says they have pushed Russian forces 34 miles outside of the capital, Kyiv. A U.S. official says eastern Ukraine is littered with the charred remains of Russian tanks. NATO estimates of up to 15,000 Russian soldiers have been killed in a month of fighting. Ukrainian hospitals are losing critical supplies to the Russian attack, so a group in Colorado is preparing to send medical supplies to the region. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford joins us, and Jessica, you spoke to a Ukrainian woman doing everything she can to organize this aid. That's right. She says at this point, there's really no act too small that Americans and Coloradans can do to help the victims in Ukraine. Life-saving supplies ready to be packed up and shipped out to a country under siege. It's horrific to even think of what they do and what level of uh, um, terror and genocide my people are going through. Marina Dobrova arrived in the U.S. in the 90s. Ever since then, she's done all she could to help her home country with the group Ukrainians of Colorado. When Russia began to attack Ukraine, she wanted to do more. All the pictures of cities which I remember as being so beautiful and happy, full of life, and now they're all in shambles. They're rubble. They're, it's it's. It's unimaginable. One of the country's greatest needs, medical supplies. This week, volunteers are needed to help get these supplies to Ukraine. Russians cut the supply um, 
humanitarian supply. They refused to uh, open humanitarian um, corridors or they let people uh, leave those occupied cities and then they just shoot them in the back. Um, as we know, many hospitals have been bombed and people do not have medical supplies. Does every little thing count in this situation? I think every little thing counts in everything we do. You know, there's hundreds of millions of Americans and if we all do something, it really adds up. That support Dubrova says is needed now more than ever. It's um, unimaginable situation some of our uh, brothers and sisters are going through. Volunteers will start packing up those supplies today. You can still sign up to help out tomorrow. All you have to do is visit us online at thedenverchannel.com so that you can find a page to sign up. Live in Denver, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Thank you, Jessica. If you're looking for ways to help support Ukraine right now, there is a gathering Sunday at Denver's Bobby Yar Park. Uh, that's at the corner of Havana and Yale. At noon, a group of Ukrainians uh, called Ukrainians of Colorado is hosting an interfaith gathering. A rabbi will speak at that event and Denver City Council members will also be there. We do have some breaking news this morning. Denver 7 sources say Aurora's police chief Vanessa Wilson is planning to resign. Let's bring in Denver 7's Veronica Costa. The department we know has been under some controversy, but none recently. So why does the resignation come now? Three high ranking sources. They confirmed to Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski that's going to be happening. Pressure, pressure rather has been mounting against Aurora Police Chief Vanessa Wilson. Sources say she has lost the confidence of her officers, but despite being told the chief plans to leave her position soon, the terms of that resignation are still being negotiated and they remain fluid. Chief Wilson became the interim chief back in 2019. That was after the former chief retired, and it's been a tumultuous time in the department since then. By the time Chief Wilson took over, public trust in APD had already dwindled. The death of Elijah McClain in 2019 and the drunk driving scandal involving Officer Nathan Meyer had already come to light by the time she took over. In August of 2020, this happened. Aurora PD detained and handcuffed a black woman and several children because they thought they were in a stolen vehicle. The vehicle they were in was an, AS, an SUV. Police should have been looking for a motorcycle instead. Chief Wilson apologized for that. Last year in February, Chief Wilson fired three officers who posed for the photos you're seeing, mocking the death of Elijah McClain. Later, Colorado's attorney general announced charges against the paramedics and the officers who detained and injected him with ketamine. In July of last year, Denver 7 spoke with Wilson about the uptick in crime and the loss of officers, which was at a record high last year. In 2019, Aurora PD had 52 officers leave the department. In 2020, 87. 2021, 126, and so far this year, 10. That includes resignations, retirements, terminations, deaths, and transfers. In October, the Aurora Fraternal Order of Police passed a vote of no confidence. That was 442 to 16. Chief Wilson is the first woman to hold the position with APD. She's been with the department for 25 years now. And we did reach out to the city of Aurora for confirmation on all of this. They told us they would not engage in, quote, speculative conversations on any personal matter. In studio, I'm Veronica Costa, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. Well, whoever takes over as chief eventually will be up against a lot, including staffing shortages. Aurora police currently have 707 officers, and that includes recruits, but it is authorized to have about 40 more. The department saw record departures over the last two years. We do expect this story to develop over the next 24 hours, and we'll be staying on top of it for you and bring you anything we learn on air and on the DenverChannel.com. Flags across Colorado are at half staff this morning to honor Madeleine Albright. The first woman to ever serve as Secretary of State died yesterday from cancer. She was 84 years old. Albright grew up here in Denver after her family fled Czechoslovakia in the 40s. She attended Maury Middle School and Kent Denver School, where she founded the school's first international relations club. Her father, Joseph Corbell, was the University of Denver's first dean of international studies. The school is now named for him. We asked the current dean about her legacy. She embodied the American dream, really. I mean, anybody can, can rise to the top. This is the, the daughter of, a, of an immigrant who came to this country as a young girl and rose to the highest position she could have, she could have uh, held in this country. 
Now, Albright served as Secretary of State under President Clinton from 1997 to 2001. In a statement, the Clinton family called her one of the finest secretaries of state, an outstanding ambassador to the UN, a brilliant professor, and an extraordinary human being. A bill protecting reproductive rights and abortion access is now headed to the governor's desk. The Reproductive Equity Act passed its third reading in the Senate yesterday along a party line vote. Uh, for some context, the bill guarantees a person's right to use or not use contraception. It affirms abortions are legal in Colorado and prohibits state and local entities from denying, interfering with or discriminating against someone who has had an abortion. Planned Parenthood of the Rocky Mountains is getting $20 million from billionaire Mackenzie Scott. The organization says the donation, which is the largest in its history, will support efforts to provide health care to its four-state region. It will also provide support for what the organization anticipates will be a wave of patients seeking abortion care as more states pass laws restricting the procedure. Scott also recently donated $13.5 million for Habitat for Humanity of Metro Denver. For the first time since the start of the pandemic, Denver's Pride Parade is returning to an in-person event this summer. The parade is one of the largest in the West, drawing half a million people to downtown. The Center on Colfax is the organizer of the parade each year. This year, Pride will take place over the span of two days on June 25th and 26th. Despite many companies raising wages in wake of the great resignation, a third of Americans are still making less than $15 an hour. The legislation in Congress that could impact minimum wage policy. A Denver man could face serious consequences over a game of pickleball. Why the 71-year-old is accused of vandalizing a rec center and what he says he was trying to do.